Julia Friends is a big theme in this movie, and you made a cameo on Friends. Super Bowl uh, yeah. episode. <laughs> I was Susie Underpants till I was 18. <laughs> that was in the fourth grade. How could you still be upset about that? Well, um, why don't you call me in 20 years and tell me if you're still upset about this? <laughs> We just lost Matthew Perry. Any thought about Matthew and what it was like to work with him? Yeah, all good thoughts and feelings. They were all so welcoming to me as just a kind of one-off character. And it was a really fun time. And, you know, a sudden passing of anybody so young is heartbreaking. And I think that it just helps all of us just appreciate what we have and to keep going in a positive way as best we can. And as beautiful, he could sort of be honored in that way, or like the show sort of be honored coincidentally mm, in, mm -hmm. in this time. So it's kind of nice that it has a little space in there. See, this is why I much prefer life before the internet. Because we would have spoken on the phone, we'd have recognized my voice and known that this is our house. I'm sorry? You have a producer who is giving notes to your director about the characters and the script. Do you ever push back on that certain producer who might have been a president of the United States? I think that's a dangerous endeavor. <laughs> Did you hear from the Obamas? Did you have a chance to talk to them? What was that like dealing with them? They had an incredible producer from Higher Ground on the set with us all the time. I mean, we had a great team of producers on this movie. It was quite a big collective. So I think in that regard, they were well represented. And I think that, you know, they did give script notes to Sam. And then I think in post-production, Sam and President Obama had some conversations. And these are really incredibly bright, prolific people who have a production company that's doing incredible work. And so for them to collaborate with us on this was a pretty thrilling thing. You had the dance scene, but Mahershala, you did not break out the Obama two-step because you've done it before. <laughs> The Obama two-step. Yes. I didn't want to upset him. You didn't want to upset him, but no. you did it well. You Thank did you. it so well. Thank you. Thank you. That would have been so meta. Yes, yes. That would have been cool. Yes. It would have been perfect if you just given just a little, just a yeah. second of it. Next time. Was there music while you all were dancing or was it one of those silent dancing? No, there was music. Oh, it was it, it was the song. We had the record. And over, we and it over, over and again. over and over. Over Come and on. over and over again. You know, that's something from my generation. So it felt like we didn't go back to the 60s or the Motown or anything like that. We stayed in my generation. Phone's still not working. It looks like the TV's out. Where's Clay? He went to the store to get a newspaper or try to find someone to talk to to see if they know what's going on. Smart. I thought I'd go over to our neighbor's house, the Huxley's. Before you go, you might want to hear about the alerts. Alerts. I want to ask y'all about technology. I did not realize the effect of technology until I saw it on my children. Have you noticed that? That it's way more than we think. And this movie really exposes that. Well, I think it is way more than we think. And I think that I find it interesting when we're all so surprised by what our children do when our children are really just following usually the lead of the adult, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the mirror for us to look at and say, hmm, maybe I need to put my phone down more because I feel like I'm not on my phone a lot, but I have had my kids say like, mom. So that's always a good indication of we don't see our own behavior as clearly as we see other people's behaviors. We were driving back to the city, then something happened. You wanna stay here, but we're staying here. We need to get them out of here. Mahershala, I want to ask you, you have played in a few movies that have conspiracy theory connected to them. When you think of Remy, especially from House of Cards, how close to reality is this? I mean, things go blank. Like, I don't know. You don't know what you don't know. I feel like our characters do a wonderful job of articulating a living public fear and really trying to navigate it as best they can in that moment because the sad reality is, is that this is all possible, everything that essentially happens in our film. And I think the film does a great job of making us very aware and encouraging us to begin to reflect on how invested we are and how dependent we are on the technologies that exist. I had news alerts on my phone this morning. Two of them were about the blackout, but then there was one that said something about maybe hackers were behind it. Mm. 
What do you think there's going to be a meltdown to? <laughs> Is that what Ruth told you? Among other horrifying things, yes. Virtually, you have a way, whether it's Moses from Free State of Jones or, you know, any character of bringing a dignity to these characters. As a black man, I, I look at this and I say, he always brings dignity to these characters, even in this situation where there's an interesting moment where you're dealing with something that is, you know, just a normal reaction as people look at you from the outside instead of the inside. I know it's late. I knock out the doorway out here. Couldn't decide if you should knock at the front door or the side door, and this went on for some time. I thought we should try the side door because it has glass and you've seen us and you've known we're, we're just, uh, you must be Amanda. Uh, Amanda Sanford, right? You, you two know each other? No. We have not had the pleasure of meeting face to face. I'm, I'm GH, GH Scott. Do you break down these characters and really try to bring a dignity to them each and every time? I think I take very seriously my responsibility to advocate for any character that I'm playing. And I think in the process of advocating for people, I think an offshoot of that is maybe dignity, maybe, you know, if that makes sense. And so whether you're playing someone who is doing something questionable or cause when we all have those moments, but whatever the case may be, you want to always commit your best energies towards advocating and telling the story of the individual that you're playing. And if that resonates with people as dignified, then I'm humbled that that's the response, you know, but I just try to tell the truth as best I can. And it helps when you have extraordinary partners like Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke and Mahala Harold to work off of. See how he worked so, us into yeah. that. See how he did that. You that's a good Robert. friend. Everything is gonna be okay, isn't it? We are seeing ongoing cyber attacks across the country. Something is happening and I don't trust them. Everything I know, I have told you. I don't believe you. I would do anything to protect my family. What's the one piece of technology you can't live without? Ways. I mean, it's not a piece of technology, but- It's an app, right? It's an app that I rely heavily upon. I, I mean, my music, my iTunes, my, you know, that anything music oriented, you know, so gotta have that. Haven't you been picking up on what's going on out there? Whatever it is, it's happening to all of us. I just want to know, what is the truth? 